Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum with powers of i. Now adding powers of i is easy if you can find a general form or some type of formula for the terms. What kind of terms are we looking at? By the way, if you wanted to get a clue on how I'm going to do this problem, you can go ahead my, and check out my video on my other channel, which is Cyber Math. I did a very similar problem. Just wanted to do both on the same day. And that's cyber with an S. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and first try to find a more general sum for this. And that's why we're going to use the same idea that we used for the video that I made on cyber math. Okay, that's why it's important for you to check both so you can kind of see the similarities. So here's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with calculus. How about that? So calculus um, isn't too hard if you know the rules, some techniques, obviously there are always, always difficult problems to deal with, especially with integrals. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So how do you integrate a function? In other words, finding an antiderivative that will satisfy certain conditions. And in this case, I'm going to integrate one over one plus x cubed. Why is that? You'll see in a little bit. Allow me to finish this up. So first of all, I want you to notice that one over one plus x cubed is actually the sum of an infinite geometric series. Why? Because if we have one plus r plus r squared, dot, 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 all the way to infinity, this can be written as one over one minus r. And guess what happens if you replace r with negative x cubed? Yes, you get the sum on the left-hand side, which is what we have. So the right-hand side equals the left-hand side. I don't know if, if that makes sense, but you're gonna have to switch sides here, okay? So we're gonna put that here, which means this is gonna be one minus x cubed, plus x to the 6, minus x to the 9. In other, in other words, powers of x cubed. Make sense? Okay, so now we have an equality, and of course there are some conditions on convergence, so on and so forth, which I'm not going to get into, but this sum can be evaluated like that, and now we're going to go ahead and integrate both sides. Why do we integrate? Again, I'm going to explain this next, okay? So let's go ahead and put a little dx on both sides and integrate. Now, when we integrate, let me clear this area real quick. We're going to get something super duper nice. Are you ready? Okay. The left-hand side is going to stay as is for now. So let's just leave it like that for now. But the right-hand side is nice because we have an infinite polynomial or a power series, whatever you want to call that. Taylor series, Maclaurin, whatever. Maclaurin, is that how you say it? Anyways, how do you integrate one? Rule says it's x because... The derivative of what function is 1, a lot of people will say x if they took a little bit of calculus or even pre-calculus. Minus x to the third. Here's the rule. You take the power, increase by 1, and then use that as the new power and divide by the new power. You see? It's easy. There's a rule for that. x to the six will be x to the seven divided by the same number minus x to the ten divided by same number. You see? Same number. So you apply the rule, and of course, there's always a c at the end. In this case, c happens to be zero. Why is it zero? Something to think about. I'm going to leave it open. Hopefully, someone will explain that in the comment section because I'm lazy and I don't want to spend too much time on this. Okay? I'm impatient. And I know a lot of people are impatient too. They just want to see the results. And I know some people in the comment section, they're like, oh, I did this with my eyes closed in 20 seconds. No, you didn't. Okay, anyways, that's another story. But people like to brag about those things. How do you integrate 1 over 1 plus x cubed? Obviously, it is nearly impossible, maybe impossible, to find a function whose derivative is equal to 1 over 1 plus x cubed without doing something special. You can't just guess and check. I mean, you can guess, but it's probably going to fail. I mean, try it. So we're going to do the following. We're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus or math and magic. How about this? First, we're going to go ahead and factor this. But I want to write it as 1 over x cubed plus 1 first. You know why? Because that looks nicer. It looks like uh, a sum of two cubes. So it can be factored. Remember the formula for a cubed plus b cubed? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. You hopefully know that. If not, you can look it up. But this is how you factor it. Guess what we're going to do? We have 
two factors in the denominator. Now we're gonna split this into two fractions. We can do so by using what's called partial fractions. You just have to follow the rules. Math is full of rules, by the way. You have to make sure that whenever the denominator is quadratic, the numerator needs to be linear. They have to be one degree apart. It's always the rule constant divided by linear, linear divided by quadratic, so on and so forth. But can we not factor x squared minus x plus one? No, you can't. It's not factorable, easily at least, right? So where do we go from here? Well, we need to find ABC. So we kind of need to split up. I mean, find the values of ABC so we can find the answer because without, I mean, without A, you can integrate this, but not without B and C because it really depends on the values of B and C. Do you think we can find the general expression for this without finding the particular values of B and C? Write down in the comment section down below if you know the answer. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna show you what the ABC values are because we have something called Wolfram Alpha that can do the hard work for us. Kind of like a large language model, I guess. I was calling it AI and some people corrected it. Okay, fine, it's not AI, but it's kind of like a smart calculator, which can do the work for you. So to integrate this, we need to know the values of ABC. A happens to be one third, B happens to be negative one third, and C is two thirds. If I plug those in, I can take out a one third, which will make things look nicer. And inside we're gonna have one over x plus one plus negative x plus two divided by x squared minus x plus one. This is not the end of it because we still kind of have to think about how you break this down. I'll show you the method, but I'm not gonna do it because again, I'm lazy. You need to do the work for me, okay? I hope you don't mind. But here's how it goes. You're gonna split up. First of all, you're gonna think about the denominator. If u is, u r, not u is, u is x squared minus x plus one, then du, which is the derivative to x minus one, multiply by dx, you get the following. We don't have two x minus one, but guess what? You can multiply the top by negative two, that'll give you two x minus four. And then you can separate the three, kind of write this as two x minus one minus three. This will be what you're looking for, and you're gonna get an ln from there. You get the idea? Of course, you kind of need to adjust by multiplying and dividing, so on and so forth. But to keep a long story short, how do we integrate the following? Let me show you what that becomes. So we have one third all the way on the outside and our integrands are inside with the dx. And now if you integrate this, you're gonna have a one third, of course, and inside you're gonna have ln x plus one plus square root of three arc 10 2x minus 1 over root 3. And let me tell you where arc 10 comes from. Minus 1 half ln x squared minus x plus 1. So this is going to be the result, which kind of looks complicated, right? But the idea is basically whenever you have a constant divided by this, this can actually be written as x minus 1 half squared plus 3 fourths, because you get a 1 fourth from there. And this is just arc tangent, because think about it. If this is t, you get t squared plus a squared in the denominator, that's arctangent. Make sense? I hope it does because we're gonna go ahead and replace x with what? <laughs> x with i. But wait a minute, this is not the answer because if you go back here, one thing to be keep in mind is this was our expression. If you replace x with i, we're not gonna get what we want. So, so far this is what we have. Let me go ahead and write that down for you. So this is what we got from the integration term by term. And this happens to be equal to our expression right here, but we got to do something. We need to take out an X, okay, to get what we want because our sum starts with one, not with X or I. You, you see what I'm talking about? And if you go ahead and replace X with I here, you're gonna get i times one minus i to the third over four plus i to the sixth over seven minus i to the ninth over 10, so on and so forth. And you're gonna have an i here. And guess what this is gonna equal when you replace x with i here everywhere, including the one third, you're gonna have something like this. One third times ln one plus i plus square root of three times arctangent 2i minus 1 divided by root 3 
minus one half of ln negative i. Guess what? This is multi-valued, so you gotta be careful. But at the end, to find the sum you're looking for, you're gonna need to divide by i, or as I do it, multiply by negative i, because it's better. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check CyberMath. And bye-bye.